Hello, this is the fifth segment of the Igneous Rock chapter <clears throat> and uh, last segment I stopped at the classification of Igneous Rocks. I went through the fact that we're gonna do the classification based of, on group names, so Felsic, Intermediate, Mafic, Ultramafic, and uh, inside the groups we're gonna go by texture because each group will have very similar textures and, and only the composition is gonna be different. So let's start gonna start with the felsic, the felsic rock. So remember if we look at the bounce reaction series we are in the lower part of it right here. So I told you that the bible of the igneous rock is the bounce reaction series. series. So if you look at this you know that the felsic igneous rocks will have amphibole, biotite, sodium plagioclase, orthoclase or k feldspar, um, muscovite possibly and quartz. So these are the minerals. So if you learn this, you know that these are the, the minerals in the in the felsic igneous rocks. You know that the quartz is like whitish, grayish, the muscovite is kind of almost white. Orthoclase is K, uh, the K feldspar is pink. Sometimes it's actually really light. Biotite is black, amphibole is black, but the sodium plagioclase is white. So these rocks usually are gonna be very light. They have low density, lower relatively low density and they have a lot of quartz in them so it's going to be interact yeah uh, it's going to be easy to to separate them with other rocks so we start with the intrusive version intrusive version always have phanoritic texture remember phanoritic remember phanoritic texture means that you can actually see the minerals by your naked eye so you can tell that this is a biotite the this this pinkish is the k feldspar right here the, the grayish is quartz, and then more K feldspar right here, some sodium plagioclase right there, um, some more biotite, a lot of quartz. The main thing is that in, in case of granite, because it's intrusive, you're going to be able to tell each mineral in it. So you know it has a lot of quartz, it has K feldspar, a lot of it, some biotite, amphibole. So these are the typical minerals. The texture is phanoritic and the name is granite. Granite is usually light, it's pink, uh, kind of pink looking because of the K feldspar. And um, if you want to know the usage of granite, this is probably the best rock out there to use for anything and everything. The granite, <clears throat> remember the quartz, K feldspar, amphibole, sodium plagioclase, these are all at least six on the hardness scale, quartz is seven. So therefore, it's very durable. When you polish it, it actually gets really, really beautiful, depending on the color of the case feldspar. It can go anywhere from whitish to kind of reddish. Um, it is very durable, so you can use it outside, inside, like countertops. Uh, you can use it in road building if it's not that pretty. As I said, this is the most widely used building rock. You can use it for ornamentation and you can use it for structure. It's very very good and very durable. Uh, the extrusive version of the granite is the rhyolite. Rhyolite, uh, remember I showed you the affinitic texture by it. That means it cools down really quickly and you cannot really see many crystals with your naked eye except some lost packs of biotite, probably some quartz. Um, the rhyolite is one of those those rocks I told you that because it cools down really quickly there must be some uh, volcanic glass and then probably some holes which makes it really good insulator and when rhyolite weathers actually it weathers into uh, zeolite soil soil containing zeolite which is a silicate mineral and the most important characteristic of the zeolite that they have like tubular structure. So when it rains, the moisture actually gets stuck in this tubular structure and it holds on to the moisture much longer than any other type of mineral. So therefore, the zeolitic, rhyolitic uh, soil is very, very good, especially for uh, grapes. So very famous vineries have formed on this kind of um, rocks which produce that zeolitic soil such as the Napa Valley in California. I just know in my country the, the best wine areas are 
uh, on this kind of soils. Remember, the rhyolite uh, is only different from granite because of the, the texture is different. The next rock you will have to know in the felsic group is the pumice. And we already talked about the pumice. It has vesicular texture. It's all volcanic glass with a lot of uh, air bubbles. It, it cooled too fast to make any minerals. And I already kind of told you how do we use it. It's the best insulation. Uh, basically, uh, people have figured out the artificial pumice. What do you think that is for insulation or insulation purposes? It's a fiberglass. The fiberglass is basically, if you, if you look at it, it's that pink material, which is nothing but glass um, needles with a lot of air. So fiberglass is basically artificial pumice. So that is the best thing to use the pumice for. People also used to take unwanted skin from their heel, but that's just the secondary use. The main use of the pumice is that it's the best insulator. So just remember that. The next one is the obsidian. And the obsidian is glassy texture. Uh, it cooled down too fast to have any minerals. And I already mentioned it to you that the most commonly it's black or red, but I have seen blue, as I said. So if you did see an obsidian, which is blue, don't get scared. It is obsidian. It's just blue color. Uh, for the obsidian, it's really, really characteristic to see these conchoidal fractures. And sometimes, sometimes you can have these ferrolites, which they call snowflake obsidian. These ferrolites are just little crystals of feldspars because the, the glass is just not so... Uh, stable so it starts crystallizing so these spherulites we call them spherulites makes the so-called snowflake obsidian spherulite here so I wrote it down spherulite these are usually white uh, rounded um, growth inside the obsidian. It's very common. Just look around in the lab. I have a good bunch of uh, snowflake obsidian. Now we just finished the fazi group. Remember, the granite is intrusive. It's phanuritic. And then you have the rhyolite, the pumice, the obsidian, and these are all extrusive ones. And all of these rocks have the exact same composition. The only difference is the texture because they, they form the different environments. And now let's move to the intermediate group. When you are in the intermediate group, then this is the area right here on the bounce reaction series. So you know that you're gonna have sodium plagioclase, uh, possibly some orthoclase, and biotite and amphibole. So this rock will have biotite and amphibole in black. And remember, but the sodium plagioclase is kind of white. And if there is k but that's pinkish. So this rock is like black and white. And actually we call, we call it, it makes it easier for you to remember, the salt and pepper rock because that's how it looks like. So let's go into the uh, characterization of them. Starting with the intrusive version, what we call diorite. Diorite has a phanuritic texture. So you can actually see the minerals, the white side, Sodium plagioclase and the blacks are amphiboles and biotites. Uh, phanuritic texture, the most important mineral, minerals are uh, sodium plagioclase, possibly K feldspar, and biotite and amphiboles. So this is the salt and pepper rock. The extrusive version of the diorite is the andesite. The andesite has very typical porphyritic texture, and based on the mineral, the phenocryst. We can call them different. Like if it has amphiboles in it, we call it amphibole andesite. If it has biotite in it, we call it biotite andesite and so on. The ones in the lab, what I have, they are amphibole andesite and the phenocrysts are going to be amphiboles. So this is what you will see in the lab a lot. And that's all you have to know from the intermediate group. And now we're going to move to the uh, mafic group. The mafic group is on the top of the bounce reaction series right here. So this is the highest temperature 
and the lowermost SiO2. When uh, the SiO2 content very low, you're going to have um, olivine, pyroxene, and calcium plagioclase. So remember, olivine is green, the pyroxene is black, and the calcium plagioclase is black too. So therefore, these rocks in this group are going to be very dark, and they are more dense because they have a lot of iron magnesium min mineral, so they are more dense than the felsic rocks. So it's kind of easy to put them in at least into the group because they are dark colored. The intrusive version is the gabbro and uh, you already kind of know the intrusive version means the texture is phanuritic. You're going to be able to see the individual minerals. Now sometimes the calcium plagioclase can be dark, uh, lighter and in that case the gabbro itself is going to be relatively light but then sometimes they can be very dark, you know, really dark. Uh, the, some of the plagioclase feldspar are actually iridescent. Uh, when they are iridescent, they have this beautiful uh, purplish, reddish iridescence on them. And the reason for that is that into the plagioclase, hematite specks are building in as it grows, and that gives the iridescence to it. Now, when you polish this special uh, gabbro, actually we call labradorite, labradorite. I'm going to write it down because this is the most beautiful um, stone there is, labradorite. Just please look it up on the internet. You will find really beautiful pieces. And it names after the place they first discovered it, Labrador. Uh, not very many places have Labradorite, so it's kind of almost always coming from Labrador. The Labradorite is, as I said, beautiful, and because of, of, of the minerals in this rock are also very durable, you know, the calcium plagioclase 6, the olivine 6, the pyroxene 6 on the hardness scale. So therefore, this is very useful for any kind of purposes. But because it's beautiful and very, very expensive, most people are using them for countertops or, or you know, the, the stores have facets from Labradorite. It's very famous. Like the more, uh, the richer the company, the more likely they will use Labradorite for their fac facets. You know, it's an amazing, when it's polished, nothing ever changes it. So it's gonna stay beautiful forever just like the granite actually and if you go to Lowe's they won't tell you that it's labradorite they will call it purple granite or whatever and make sure that when you go to Lowe's don't believe the salesperson because they don't know the rocks right they only have two kinds of rock one is the marble and the other one is the granite that's what the general public knows they have no clue about labradorite or gabbro so now you're smarter than those people and you can explain it to them, by the way. I don't know if they'd listen to you, but you, you have to give a chance and do it. Just do it. <clears throat> okay, the extrusive version of the Gabbro is the basalt. And the basalt is, of course, as you can see, aphonitic, means you don't see any big minerals. Uh, if, if there is any, like in Hungary, we have a lot of basalt which contains visible olivine. So the only thing which it can actually contain which is visible would be olivine. Now when the basalt volcano cools down, it actually makes uh, very typical uh, columnar joints. And that's just the way the basalt cools down. Uh, like the Devil's Mar no, sorry, the Devil's Tower in Wyoming. That's typical basalt. If you go to the Columbia River Gorge in uh, between Oregon and Washington State, you do see a lot of those kind of basalt. If you just travel through Idaho, you see a lot of columnar basalt. It's very common in that area. So that's that. And uh, I will show you pictures when we go through the volcano chapters. Uh, the next one is the scoria. The scoria is very similar to the pumice except the pumice is white and floats on water. I didn't tell you, the pumice is floating on water. It's so light. The scoria is a bit heavier because it has more, see, remember we are on top of the bounce reaction series up here. So therefore it's mostly iron magnesium mineral. So it's heavier. Even the bubbles cannot hold it up. It still sinks in the water. 
but it cools down too fast to make any minerals so in the scoria it's basically volcanic glass with gas bubbles so that's scoria remember the only difference between scoria and gabbro is what yes the texture that's it nothing else is different and we just finished the mafic igneous rocks and the next one which comes up is the ultra mafic so this is the ultra mafic group and when we have ultra mafic uh, rocks it's very rare actually so you really only learn one type and that's the dunite the dunite is uh the the rock which forms strictly from uh, olivine and pyroxene depending on how much pyroxene is present if it's only one to two percent we call it dunite if it has up to 10% pyroxene, we call it actually peridotite. Um, so in your book, you will see peridotite, but I call it dunite because the one, the samples we got, they are rather dunite than peridotite samples. The, the one we have, the pyroxene is like one to 2% possibly. So that's the end of the uh, igneous rock classification. And uh, I'm gonna, stop here and we'll continue uh, on the next segment. I'll see you.